We're a month into the World Series of Poker and things have taken a turn for the weird. From stoners and viral celebrations to the cheating scandal of 2023. Move over, Robbie. This is Tight Poker News. Now that we've had over a week for the dust to settle on this $250,000 super high roller cheating scandal, does anyone know who actually won? Needs a six that's not a spade. Oh, and finds the oh six God. that's not a spade! The bracelet is Brewers! Chris Brewer, congratulations. I hope you got a chance to bask in your first WSOP bracelet win. So did anyone get the opportunity to talk to this guy? Does anyone know how he's doing? No? Okay, cool. It seems that after the event, the entire spotlight was on potential cheater, but certified menace, Martin Cabral. Cheating allegations are rocking the poker world. Did this player, Martin Cabral, mark cards during an event or was it all just a ruse? Now, as you probably heard, Martin is being accused of marking cards in the $250,000 high roller event. Doug Polk gave him a chance to explain these viral clips and he claims that in this clip, he's just staring at his opponent's stack. Now, the experts in the lab here at Tight Poker have reviewed the tape for dozens of hours and we have come to the conclusion that we just ain't buying it. Cabrell is also claiming that this super sus behavior is just part of his game of putting people on tilt and getting a read on opponents. While some of the poker world, although not too approving of this unorthodox strategy, do believe him, and there are, well, those who just don't. And I just realized I'm added to that list. Super. And I ended up making a mistake, a really bad mistake and uh, began multi-accounting empty teeth at, at that time. I did this for about four to five months before I stopped. And I had originally started doing this because I knew there were there was a lot of shady, shady shit happening in those games. Um, I knew there were people card sharing and multi and working as teams, um, things like that. Uh, so... Originally, I was just trying to fight against that so I, so I could keep playing in those kind of games. It doesn't excuse what I did. Luckily for Martin, the target on his back has quickly shifted to GPI's 2021 Poker Player of the Year, Ali Imsirovich, who recently posted a statement confirming allegations against him of online multi-accounting. Now, he went on to explain how he got banned from the platform and had his $320,000 in winnings seized. His excuse? Well, everyone else was doing it. Did Homie just spawn as an adult and skip the coming of age classics? Like, if everyone jumped off a bridge, would you do it? And two wrongs don't make a right? Ellie, I'm not mad. Honestly, I'm just disappointed. Your father, though, on the other hand. It's time. So I'm gonna have a tough conversation with Ali Imsirovich. This fucking clown. Guy gets caught cheating red-handed to such an extent that he gets hundreds of thousands of dollars confiscated from his account. Doesn't even fight it. Doesn't even say anything about it. Just kind of disappears. And then three years later, comes out to make a 30-minute video clearing the air. And in this video, he's wearing a fucking orange hoodie. You know, like he's working for Fader Hulse's training site. Speaking of subpar excuses, here's an absolute gem. This poker player was being staked by his fans and he made two final tables in two separate tournaments at two separate venues, happening at the exact same time. Ironically, going by the Twitter handle at BetOnDrew, the poker world had a mix of reactions to his careless behavior, many of which think he should be banned from the staking platform. His excuse to the critics? The truth is, I didn't realize when day two was in the MGM. I had a couple of drinks after busting the tag team, stating right after these few drinks, he was convinced to go and play the MGM event. Why is it that poker players are still convinced that alcohol in the felt can be a positive plus EV combination? But can the same thing be said about the devil's lettuce? Well, I ain't convinced. 
check out this guy coming back from his break after a cheeky little joke. And there is the four. It was an all-Texas showdown at the 50th event of the WSOP, and we weren't even playing Texas Hold'em. Sweet Lou Garza took home the $10,000 entry Pot Limit Omaha Championship with one of the most memorable celebrations of WSOP history. Though I'm a little confused. They didn't host this event in AC, yet why does this whole group look and act like the cast of Jersey Shore? To put an even bigger statement on the win after the broadcast was over Lou, with no ring and just his bracelet to offer, literally shipped it all in with a proposal to his girlfriend. Aw, we all love a happy ending. So adorbs. Wow. Tom Dwan has just won the biggest pot in the history of televised poker. Lastly, turning the spotlight away from the WSOP, has anyone else been missing live streams? Honestly, going from Durr winning the biggest pot in televised poker history, to watching Billy Bob, no one knows, from Fork in the Road, Arkansas, win the $20,000, yada, yada, yada. You get me. Tuning into every single WSOP event can get a tad underwhelming compared to the absolute heat streams like HCL were dropping. Put a smile on your face because it's Big Bet Poker Blast Off Week hosted by Eric Person. Well, if that's how you're feeling, get ready to fill your boots. Love him or hate him, EP is about to drop some heat for live stream poker fans this week. That's all for this week's Tight Poker News, but make sure to check out our site and socials for the latest in poker news, tips, game guides, and more.